Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to episode two of All Things CC. Here is my take podcast. And today we are going to talk about the, we're going to continue to talk about the Funky Dineva situation and dive in a little bit deeper to um, some things that I have watched, I've listened to, and I have some personal thoughts on the matter. But before I get into all that, I hope everybody's day was a good day you accomplish whatever it is that you need to accomplish and that you are one step closer to your goals and dreams being completed or coming into fruition now um so i had to go back and look at the clip one last time because i felt like i missed some topics and I missed some key points that I want to try to touch on today. And I'm also going to touch on the fact that he came out and he apologized. So I'm going to tell you guys what I think about that apology. So, yeah, so I went back to look at the clip. And I know I talked um, about this a little bit in my first episode, which I have uploaded. So you guys can check that out. He talked about her being promiscuous and I know I had mentioned about, you know, okay, she likes showing her skin, who doesn't, who, who, but, you know, getting deeper into what promiscuous means, it's kind of like you kind of calling her like a hoe or like she's, she's a, she's for the street. She's a, she's a pass around or something. Like we don't even know what Chloe really eat for breakfast, let alone who she sleeps around with. The only person that we even known of her having any type of interaction with was Gunna. And that was short-lived until he went to jail. So, to say that she was promiscuous, I think that word in itself was just really distasteful. He could have said a better word if he just wanted to attack her, you know, her sexuality or what have you. So that one was that. I also wanted to talk a little bit more about the fact that when Daniva was going on this rant, how Al Reynolds was sitting in his seat giggling at the fact that this grown man was going off on this young lady as if it was all fun and games. Like, you know, I would have at least thought that he would probably be like, well, you know what, Daniva, that's 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 not right we shouldn't say that or whatever but he was enjoying that in the moment he was literally basking and giggling in the moment i also want to point out how claudia looked so defeated in that moment just looking at her sitting in between two gay men and they're going back and forth she looked so defeated when he was talking about Chloe how he was talking about Chloe like I really want Fox Soul to really rethink their panel y'all need some balance I also realized that in my you know my first episode that I had mentioned something about what his mama looked like now, although I follow Dineva on YouTube, I know a little bit about his personal life. But I don't know a lot about his personal life, but from what I heard or, you know, listened to or somebody told that his mama had passed away. So with that being said, I'm going to retract anything mentioning his mom because I, I'm not a believer of attacking someone who has transitioned. So, yeah. So, it was just like a lot of stuff. I'm like, ooh, I miss this. Ooh, I miss that. Because I was just so in the moment that I just felt like I need to get what I have on my chest off. So that's why I had to revisit, you know, the original clip. And I do stand by what I said as far as him 
have an out for black women. Like it's, it's something embedded in him that he has not come to terms with that is allowing him to lash out the way that he's lashing out. And I know I've watched a couple of, you know, YouTubers channels and everything and people commenting, having a commentary on this situation, but they're also talking about the fact that, you know, he has a lot of hardcore fans. And they don't think that what he said was wrong because he has the right to his opinion and so on and so forth. But my thing is, is there ever a fine line, a line that you cannot cross when you are deliberately trash talking somebody like is is there is there not a line that youtube content creators would not go past for a viral moment or it's just fair game all across the board like is there not any integrity nowhere in there to say you know what nah i'm not going to say that because that's a bad look on my brand and what i'm trying to do here And I've also heard a couple of YouTubers say that they don't, I guess it's some type of YouTube code or whatever. I'm not hip to the YouTube code because I'm just new to this, but I guess it's a YouTube code to where other YouTubers are not going to talk about other YouTubers. But because Funky.Neva was on a different platform, they gave those youtubers the right to critique and criticize his commentary about chloe Chloe bailey now i don't know how i would feel about that because if you're a youtuber and you're on your platform and you're saying something that i don't agree with i don't know if i can be quiet But I guess because, you know, I guess YouTubers, they know how hard it is to keep their channels and everything like that. So they want to make sure that everybody has their channels and everybody continues to eat and make money or whatever. But then, like I said, is there ever a fine line? But that's a topic for another day. Um, so let's get into the apology. I was trying to find the original video clip and I cannot find it nowhere on YouTube, which is kind of ironic because when I went and looked on Fox to try to find the clip, they only had a clip of, oh my God, who was this person? I forgot who it was. It was a clip of somebody from today's episode. But I did not see the clip of him apologizing to Chloe for what he has said. So, I'm going to go off of my memory. And um, just give you guys what I feel. So, he started off by saying, you know, you guys know how this goes. You know, you um, say something that's controversial and you're on pretty much on somebody else's platform. You know, the company's going to reach out to you and tell you to apologize. And other people are going to reach out to you and tell you to apologize. And he said that he did not want to give a generic apology um, because that's what they want him to say. He wanted to pretty much apologize in his own way. And he pretty much said that he still stand 10 toes down and feeling the way about her career and her personality which is absolutely fine because that's not what my issue was and that's not what a lot of other females and other people issue was it was not about you attacking her career or her personality it was you attacking her features and her look so He goes on to say, I still stand 10 toes down in that. I'm not going to apologize for that. But I will apologize for attacking that young woman's 
features and calling her fat and you know so on and so on he said I could have just stopped it right there but I choose I chose to keep keep going and it was in poor taste but you guys who have looked at the clip or will look at the clip just look at his body language the body language is not languaging and it's not aligning with the choice of words he is saying so therefore for me the apology was not authentic it was not authentic it was not genuine and it was not sincere he is only apologizing because he had pressure on that ass that's it that's all he meant every word that he said and if you go back and look at the first how the first video of it all starting and when Claudia asked him what he thought about the whole situation about Holly being pregnant. The way he turned his lip up and the way that he was looking, it was giving, yeah, I'm about to shake some shit up. Yeah, I'm about to say something that's controversial. Yeah, I'm about to say something that's not going to be appealing to a lot of people, but I don't give a fuck. That was the look that he was giving. So yeah, he's not apologizing because he's sincerely sorry. He's apologizing because the, the company and the powers that be put fire up under that ass. And he didn't like it. And this is why you have to really be careful about what you say on other people's platforms. Because they are in control. Yeah, say what you want to say. Your opinion is your opinion. But if you know that you're going to get backlash from it, and he said that he knows he was going to get backlash from it, you put the company, the platform that you are working for, you put them in the position to whereas a lot of people might stop fucking watching TGIF Foxo. All because you had a moment where you thought that Shit was going to go in your favor. And it backfired. So, no, I don't think the apology is genuine. Do I accept his apology? It's not my apology to accept. That's up to Chloe. And that's up to Hallie. Which they are not going to give him the time of day to accept his apology. Because you don't already put your foot in your mouth. So now you have already given them, if they never knew who you were, you have given them your first impression of, the, of you. So they're not going to even entertain your apology. My apology or me accepting your apology is irrelevant. It's irrelevant because I don't think you mean it because this is your M.O., apparently this is how you make your bread and butter this is this is how you keep relevant off the backs of black women who make up majority of your following so i knew that it was going to be it wasn't going to be long before he had to apologize I knew if he wasn't going to do it on his own platform, they was going to force him to do it. And then Claudia was like, well, you know what? I appreciate your apology because I was getting a lot of um, inboxes from black women saying how you was attacking them and everything like that. So I appreciate you for apologizing. And, woo, woo, woo. and he was like, and he paused and he was like, no, that's understandable. That's understandable. He did not want to say sorry. He did not want to apologize. And then you got good old bean-headed ass Al Reynolds sitting on the opposite side, silent as a church mouse. His energy was not the same today. He was quiet like a church mouse. 
I'm pretty sure he got some backlash too. But because he didn't go as far as Funky did, he ain't got to apologize. But he is just as guilty for laughing and thinking that females have are supposed to tell the world when they're pregnant because they are celebrities. The audacity. So, yeah. I want to know what you guys think about his apology. Do you think that it was sincere? Do you think it was fake like I did? Um, if you are following him, will you stop following him now? Like, are you going to continue to be a hardcore um, funky fan? And if so, that is that is perfectly your prerogative. And, um, yeah, let's get the comments going down in the uh, comment section. Let's have a dialogue. Um, like I said before, I'm going to continue to follow this. I, it probably won't go no further than what, than what it has as since he has made his quote unquote apology. I think it can, um, die down now and we can focus on something else. Now there was a uh oh my god you guys um I forgot who I was watching and I was gonna say something else, but I'm gonna say something else <laughs> that's not even pertaining to what I was about to say. But thinking about it a little bit deeper right do you guys think that this was something to distract us him saying this and I, I ask that because you know we have been on this Holly Bailey train our, our Ariel our Little Mermaid and then Holly comes out with this empowering single called Angel that really lifts up black girls and black women, letting us know that we are beautiful and that we are, you know, we are it. We are God sent, we are angels. Like, and then for him to say that she is not cute, she is unattractive, like, you're purposely trying to tear a black woman down in the height of her sister trying to promote this positive affirmation, this positive, um, what's the word? I can't even think of the word right now. But she's just trying to be positive and bring up music and uplift black women and black girls. And here you come trying to tear down a black woman, her sister in spe specifically, in this moment. And I also feel like it is, I don't, I can't even say it's a hidden agenda because a lot of, a lot of them, again, not all gay men, transgender women are not like this, but I feel like it's like a community, it's really a community of them who, who prize on talking down and degrading women of color. But that's just my personal opinion. You guys do not have to like my opinion. That's perfectly fine. I am a huge person on agreeing to disagree. And we can move on. This is what my podcast is about. It's about me giving my opinion. My unpopular opinion for most. And for me to agree to a disagree. And to just have good conversation. So, yeah, I just wanted to get back on here and give you guys the update on this whole mess because that's what it was. It was a mess. And, um, yeah, we're going to probably end it right here with talking about this. And next episode, we are, I'm definitely going to 
talk about something else, <laughs> of course, which I think I have in mind to talk about the pink sauce girl. Absolutely. That's going to be my next um, episode. So I thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you like this, um, this episode, click the like button. Also click on the notifications to get notifications of new vlogs and podcast episodes for the future. And just make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode two of All Things CC. Here is my take. And I will see you guys on the next or speak to you guys on the next episode. Bye.